there is some fresh tension brewing in Kerala between Governor Arif Mohammad Khan and Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan. Now, the governor in his latest attack has claimed he is gathering information to write to the President of India regarding Vijayan's comments about gold smuggling. This comes after Kerala, Chief Minister responded to the governor's letter where he was being accused of inaction and delay over information that was asked by the governor in regard to gold smuggling. Now, let's tell you in that letter, the chief minister had written that preventing gold smuggling lies under the purview of the central government and not the state government. Hence, the governor should raise the matter with the union government. However, now in response, the governor has warned to write to President amid no information from the CM. When asked if the CM is obligated to inform the governor about state matters, Khan pointed out that these aren't ordinary issues and questioned why he wasn't informed about such serious allegations. He noted that the state should report important matters to the governor. Additionally, Khan claimed that Vijayan didn't send the chief secretary and DGP when he summoned them, further adding to the friction. Listen in. The proceeds of the money, proceeds of the gold smuggling and other crimes are being used to fund the banned organizations. If it is not anti-national, what else will be anti-national? And police website is saying this. CM is explained that it was an action taken by police and courts. My question is why he has not informed and briefed the head of the state. If anti-national activities are going on, why he is keeping me in dark about it? Why I am sitting here in the Raj Bhavan? My duty is only to see that anti-national activities are not permitted in the state. Amid the standoff, that is, CPIM leader Brinda Karat has hit back, calling him an agent of the BJP. Listen in. Kerala governor is a serial offender as far as violation of constitutional propriety and the constitutional role of a governor is concerned. He has absolutely no right under the constitution of India to comment or to ask in a written uh, demand to the elected chief minister of Kerala about any remark he may or may not have made. He is acting not as the ambassador of the Constitution of India, but as the ambassador in Kerala from the Delhi Raj, representing the narrow interests of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Jayalakshmi, my colleague, uh, joins me for more inputs. Jayalakshmi, good morning. This is, of course, not the first time that we're looking at a situation where the chief minister and the governor are at loggerheads in Kerala. Having said that, this is a new flashpoint that has come to the fore. But what more do we know about this new controversy? Yes, uh, so now what we know is that uh, according to the governor, the chief minister has in open admitted that there are large-scale crimes that are happening in the district of Malapuram and Kerala, and uh, specifically uh, saying about talking about gold smuggling, which the chief minister himself has admitted. So now what the governor is saying is that uh, he, being the head of the state, was not, uh, you know, was kept in the dark and not informed about any of these. So uh, th that is the biggest uh, complaint here uh, that the governor is raising, and he is in fact saying that according uh, to the article that was uh, done, according to the interview of the chief minister in the Hindu, the Hindu newspaper, there were it was reported that there were anti-national and anti-state activities happening from in the in Malappuram district specifically, and in fact, amid Kerala is facing many. Uh, you know, allegations on uh, major crimes happening in the state, which involves the ADGP as well. So amidst all of this, the government says that he, he was never informed the same about the same by the chief minister or any state government authorities. That is the um, allegation against uh, the uh, chief minister. And in fact, uh, we know that the governor had summoned the state DGP and the home secretary for inquiring for inquiry about the same, but this, uh, but state government 
and Prilaji Jain had clearly denied those, those summons and he said that it cannot be present in front of the governor as it is unconstitutional for a governor of the state to summon the state administrators in what the state government stand in. And now as we also heard that the CGM also believes that the uh, governor is trying to you know, uh, play the Sant Parivar mindset into the uh, state, which again the CPIM is completely against off. So the blame game continues once again. Governor versus uh, the state government in the state of Kerala. We know previously there was an issue of between the SFI and the, the governor, but now it has come down to administrative matters and other issues where the governor says that he has sought a report from the chief minister to which it, the reply was given only after... Right, Jalakshmi. Right. Jalakshmi, thank you very much for getting us the latest as to what we're given to understand and how this could potentially pan out. But for the moment, we leave it at that. But we keep our focus on the South, but let's move on to what's happening in Karnataka. Because trouble seems to be mounting for the Karnataka BJP in the alleged COVID-19 irregularity scam. Now, the Karnataka government has decided to constitute a special investigation team and a cabinet subcommittee to take further action on the report by the Justice uh, Michael D. Kana Commission of Enquiry, which investigated alleged irregularities in the purchase of equipment and medicines during COVID-19 pandemic, when, remember, the BJP was in power in the state. Now, the decision was taken at a meeting of the cabinet chaired by Chief Minister Siddharamaya in the partial report that is submitted on August 31st. In 11 volumes, the commission examined the expenditure to the tune of 7 crores, 2 lakhs, 223,644 crores. Now, Karnataka Law and Parliamentary Affairs Minister H.K. Patel said that the commission has recommended recovery of 500 crore. It has also been decided to begin the recovery proceedings immediately and to blacklist those companies or establishments involved in wrongdoing. Neha Hibale, my colleague, joins me for more. Neha, good morning. These are, of course, serious allegations. Uh, what do we know about the allegations that have been levelled? And more importantly, has this become the new standoff between the now ruling government and the previous one? Yes, Neha, these are extremely serious allegations that, in fact, you know, have been coming to light now from the time of the former Chief Minister, Dr. Raj Bomai, and the then Health Minister, Mr. Dr. K. Sudhakar, mm. as well. Uh, remember, of course, now the Cabinet yesterday has decided that they would be forming an SIC that's not only going to impact the probing, uh, probing these COVID irregularities that took place during the BJP rule, but also, in fact, you know, now we're being told that officers will also be quizzed to here to the effect of course, you know, what, what their involvement was, were materials purchased or higher, was in fact, you know, public money here swindled. All of this is something that's now, of course, you know, uh, going to be coming to light. But uh, like you rightly said, of course, you know, this could indeed be the newest standoff now between the ruling and the opposition here in the state of Karnataka, because we've seen how the BJP, in fact, has reacted to all of these allegations already and denied all these charges and called this nothing but a political conspiracy. Right, Neha. Thank you very much for uh, getting us more inputs as far as this is concerned. But for now, let's leave it at that. From